since the belief has ceased that a god broadly directs the destinies of the world, and that, all the apparent twists and turns in its path notwithstanding, is leading mankind gloriously upward, man has to set himself ecumenical goals, embracing the whole earth. The former morality, namely Kant's, demanded of the individual actions which one desired of all men. That was a very naive thing, as if everyone knew, without further ado, what mode of action would benefit the whole of mankind, that is, what actions at all are desirable. It is a theory like that of free trade, supposing that universal harmony must result of itself in accordance with innate laws of progress. Perhaps some future survey of the requirements of mankind will show that it is absolutely not desirable that all men should act in the same way, but rather that in the interest of ecumenical goals, whole tracts of mankind ought to have special, perhaps under certain circumstances even evil, tasks imposed upon them. In any event, if mankind is not to destroy itself through such conscious universal rule, it must first of all attain to a hitherto altogether unprecedented knowledge of the preconditions of culture as a scientific standard for ecumenical goals. Herein lies the tremendous task facing the great spirits of the coming century.